This training film is not meant to replace the full written instructions in the owner and installer manual. There are three basic models. 6036 which has three 2 square meter panels attracting 42 STCs. 6027 with two 2.5 square meter panels with 38 STCs. And 6037 with three 2.5 square meter panels and 44 STCs. This panel selection and number of people guide is easy to follow. The total panel area increases as you move to the right on the x-axis. More panels assist performance in colder regions if the panels are not facing north. In reduced sunlight conditions, when panel inclination is not optimum. For heavy users of washing machines, etc. And will save more power because of more solar contribution. Use AAA shower roses and set the flow rate to 9 to 12 litres per minute. These water heaters are not suitable for deeply filled spas or baths and connect to continuous electricity supply. The panel location is all important. They must be shade free and facing north. Otherwise panels may be installed up to 45 degrees from north found with a compass, but they will lose 5% efficiency. Keep the panels 1200 millimeters from all roof edges in high wind areas. This slide shows the correct inclination for panel mounting. Install the panels approximately equal to the local latitude. For example, Cairns is 17 degrees, Brisbane is 27 degrees and Sydney is 34 degrees south latitude. If the angle is more than 15 degrees from the correct angle, 5% efficiency will be lost. The panels are easier to install at the roof angle but never flat. If the angle is less than 10 degrees, specially made mounting frames are required to make the necessary adjustment. The pump provided is good for up to 6 metres from the ground to the top of the panels. Otherwise, order the booster pump for a 12 metre lift. Group the tank and panels as close together as possible, with the tank preferably closest to the area of most use. And Minimise piping runs with a maximum of 20 metres from the tank to the panels. This slide shows the importance of set out by leaving 500 millimetres clear around the panels to allow for service and allowing for high wind situations by keeping the bottom of the panels 1200 millimetres from all roof edges. Allow for full drainage of the panels for service and frost conditions by skewing them 25 millimetres off square on the mounting frames. These two standards provide guidance to allow you to determine likely wind pressures. You are advised to obtain a copy and study them. The wind pressure is always highest around the roof perimeter. You must also comply with all local and national building codes and use only the fastener supplied or an equivalent corrosion resistant class 4 fastener. This is a tricky subject as wind speed, exposure and pressure varies from place to place in accordance with local topography. The varying wind pressures are delineated in the different colours on the colour bar legend. You may observe that the higher wind areas cover the Australian coastline and inland from Corindai in New South Wales on the east coast and then north over the top end down to Greenhead north of Perth and the highest, Zone D, runs from 20 degrees to 25 degrees south latitude between Carnarvon and Port Hedland. We advise you to check with your local authority. There are three mounting designs, angle and stainless steel strap for metal and tile roofs in low wind rated areas. Metal and tile roofs which are wind rated from N1 to N3 and C1 from Australian Standard 4055 and metal and tile roofs which are wind rated from N4 to N6 and from C2 to C4 from Australian Standard 4055. The roof must be assessed for strength by a qualified person such as a qualified builder, structural engineer, building certifier or roof truss manufacturer. Check for asbestos and keep your roof penetrations to the high point of the profile of the roof sheet or tile. Avoid staining the roof by removing all swarf and do not use screws any longer than 15mm when securing to the panel. 
allow for long-term exposure and expansion and contraction. Seal all roof penetrations with deck type or an equivalent seal. Ensure that the sealing washer is not lost and always check the panel joiners for leaks. Always use two spanners. The sensor wire is fragile. Avoid sharp edges and protect it as necessary with conduit. Seal the entry point in the roof and do not run it with the uninsulated hot outlet pipe. Secure it reasonably loosely to an insulated pipe with cable ties. Unused fittings on the panel are plugged with panel blanking plugs. Always use two spanners. The panel inlet fitting is fitted to the bottom right hand corner of the panels to supply water from the storage tank. Roof penetration for the panel inlet supply pipe must be lower than the panel inlet fitting to remove possible airlocks. Fit the panel outlet fitting to the top left hand corner using two spanners. It incorporates the temperature sensor probe and return water outlet fitting. Connect supply to the bottom of the panel with a continuous fall of not less than 5 degrees or 1 in 10. After flushing, check carefully for leaks before fitting the insulation cover. The water heater is installed in exactly the same manner as Saxon heat exchange water heaters. Check the mains pressure. If it is over 1100 kPa, connect a pressure limiting valve as required by law. If it is over 800 kPa, consider connecting a limiting valve as this may prevent the possibility of water hammer if it is going to occur. Disconnect the union or elbow on the solar return taking care not to lose the restrictor. Disconnect the solar supply pipe fitting and connect to mains pressure. Flush all pipes to remove any thread seal tape or other debris. Cap the return pipe and pressurise the solar circuit to test for leaks. Fill the tank with water. Just because water runs from the reticulation pipes does not mean that the tank has been filled. Water must flow from the overflow pipe. Lead the pump to prime it. Before turning the power on, Prime the pump and purge air from the pump by removing the screw and allowing air to escape and water to dribble from the hole. Refit the screw and check for leaks. One of the most important items when commissioning is to ensure complete solar circulation. Switch the power on, the pump runs for one minute. Confirm that the pump is running by switching on every minute and keep the pump operating. Or a qualified person can bridge the two brown active wires together on the board to force the pump to run when the power point is turned on. Set the pump speed to 1, 2 or 3, start at 1 and then work up to a higher number. Do not start on a higher number first and work down for maximum power saving. Normally 1 or 2 are for higher ceilings and 3 is for high pitched roofs. The preferred method to check for full circulation is to disconnect the panel outlet fitting with the pump on and observe the discharge. Or disconnect the solar return pipe at the tank elbow fitting and temporarily cap the tank fitting to stop the tank from draining and observe the discharge. Always be aware of possible high temperatures. Then repeat for the other pump settings. After reconnection, check carefully for leaks before fitting all the insulation covers. Lag all pipes as instructed in the installation manual. The tank is unpressurized and vented to atmosphere. Therefore, install the water heater in a well-ventilated space. Advise the householder on their best tariff options. Consider the time when the water is used and the possible need for time switches. Advise a minimum of 18 hour tariff and stay away from an 8 hour night tariff or tell the householder there will be less hot water available. This control board is under the lower cover. 
The only connection for you to make is the sensor cable. All other connections have already been made in the factory. Insert the sensor cable through the cable gland. Knot it behind the gland to prevent accidental withdrawal. And connect the wire by pressing in the button and inserting the wire in the terminal. Then check it. The control board diagnoses its own faults and indicates operating conditions. The red light indicated shows the conditions listed in the manual. Note that when the power is switched on, the pump runs for one full minute and then reverts to normal operation. This is the way to check the pump's operation. These two short flashes indicate a sensor fault. These are the joiners for joining the short sensor lead in the ceiling space from the panels to the long sensor lead brought up from the tank below. Two joiners must be used, not one. The Saxon warranty covers cold locations and high altitudes where temperatures fall no lower than minus 10 degrees Celsius and at maximum altitudes of up to 800 meters. The anti-freeze protection kit must be fitted in freeze prone areas experiencing ambient air temperatures below plus 6 degrees. It is not generally known that the temperatures below plus 6 degrees Celsius can freeze panels and rupture the pipes. This is how the valves work. The air valve lets the panels drain back to the tank at night or when the pump is not operating, provided the non-return valve indicated is removed. A secondary safeguard is provided by the frost valves which open at plus 3 degrees Celsius and the panels drain provided the pipes connecting the panels and the tank are run with a continuous downward fall of at least 5 degrees. Level runs or S-bends can be blocked by frozen water preventing the panels from draining fully. So run all pipes with a 1 in 10 or 5 degree continuous downward fall. This is probably the most important slide of all. If you follow this guide you must succeed in making a trouble free installation. Read it carefully from the last page in the book and put a copy of it in your toolkit. Is all pipe work flushed from debris and leak tested? Is flow control disc fitted in the solar return line? Fill the tank by lifting the lever on the valve and observing water discharge from the overflow. Set the flow rate to 9 to 12 litres a minute. Prime the pump. Do not leave unfilled panels exposed without suitable shade cover. Finally remove covers from panels. Is the panel temperature sensor wire connected in the roof space? Check that all roof entries allow for expansion, contraction and long-term exposure. Is the panel temperature sensor wire connected to the control board? Set the pump speed to 1. Plug in the solar control unit and switch the power on. Check the control board status indicator. Ensure there is no sensor fault, that is no double flash. Check for pump running by removing the center screw and check that the shaft is turning. Check for complete circulation and return to tank. Adjust the pump speed as required. Turn on power for electric heating. After the tank is heated, set the tempering valve. Explain to the householder the functions and operations of the solar water heater. Always call back and check to see if the householder is happy with the installation.